I want to ask you a question, and I hope that you would answer honestly. You're by yourself. You're praying to God. If you were to pray for the body of Christ, your brothers and sisters in Christ all over the world, what would your prayer to God be? Now, if you're honest and you serve Christ in truth and sincerity, I would hope your answer would be something like, Lord, I pray that your sons and daughters would read the Holy Word more, that they would get into their prayer closet, that they would pray more, that they would seek you, Jesus, in truth and sincerity, that they would put on the full armor of God in order to preach the gospel, but also to defend the gospel, to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, to preserve them, to keep them, things like that. We want Jesus Christ found, and we want Jesus to be praised and honored and worshipped, right? Now, the reason I ask you that is because I'm going to play a clip today from one of the greatest buffoon false prophets out there, hands down. You're looking at rock star false prophet Dana Coverstone. For those of you who don't know who this man is, he had a series of dreams in 2020. Dreams that, he said, came from God. Now, these dreams included false prophecies, such as Donald Trump will hands down win a re-election. He said that Washington, D.C. would burn. He said that the economy would certainly collapse. And even Russian and Chinese soldiers would be on American soil, sticking Americans into FEMA camps or internment camps. Now, this potato has been wrong about everything. In fact, not one iota of anything that he's ever spewed, in the name of God, by the way, has even approached coming close to being fulfilled. In fact, in many cases, the opposite happened. Now, did that hurt him? Did the so-called Christians, according to the Bible, did they reject him? Oh, no, 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 no. They elevated him even higher into this rock star status where he is making, oh, my goodness, I can't even speculate how much money that he's making for being wrong about everything. Try to even imagine that. You're consistently in 100% wrong, yet they keep showering him with money. Unbelievable. Now we're going to listen to a clip today from one of Dana's latest fake dream videos. He's, he's calling this one the Flaming Spear Dream. I guess titling these uh, false prophecies, these false dreams, with titles, uh, I guess to the blind followers, it gives it validity. But the clip itself, we're not going to listen to the ridiculous dream because it doesn't matter. He's already a false prophet. But a, uh, a line that he says here is really going to give a testimony, I feel, to what his purpose in the absolute realm of satanic deception really speaks to. So let's listen. And want to just say a couple things. First of all, I'm praying that God is raising up more and more dreamers. We need people dreaming. Now, did you hear that? You, you know now why I asked that question at the beginning of the video. What would your prayer be? Let's listen to this again. And want to just say a couple things. First of all, I'm praying that God is raising up more and more dreamers. We need people dreaming. Uh, so his prayer to God is that God would raise up more and more dreamers he says we need people dreaming I, I, I apologize for the pause he really said this what is he really saying well now that he's got so many people in the absolute bondage of deception they've gone off the path they've listened to this kentucky hillbilly and now his prayer to God is that more people will be like him. Nothing about reading the word of God. You know, my prayer to God is not that more and more people would read the word of God as we're instructed to by Jesus, but that we would get into fantasy, into dreaming. 
And do you think the followers like to hear that? Oh, they love to hear that because they want to do this too because of this cloud. We want to be dreamers. That should be our goal. Let us all dream things and then we can leave our Bibles on the shelves and we can share dreams online with each other and completely go off the rails. I want to take you to the book of Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read some verses here. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith. Where does your faith come from? Well, faith cometh from the word of God, by hearing the word of God. Does it come from dreams? No, it doesn't. And of the knowledge of the Son of God, under the perfect man, under the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children. I would argue that Dana Coverstone and even his co-conspirator, Sherry Goff, I think her name is, they are children. And what's happened is they are tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and the cunning craftiness. Look, look how this is put so eloquently, beautiful, perfect, and true. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. This is exactly what's happening. His false dreams edify no one. But it continues. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fits uh, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working of the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk, not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. This perfectly describes what this wolf, Dana Coverstone, this whole movement that he started, it describes exactly who he is and what he's doing all the way. This is kind of how I equate this whole situation. If I went into Johnny's Slick Car Salesman here and I spent $20,000 on a, on a car and he said, oh, it's got all the bells and the whistles and I drove it off the lot and an hour later, it completely died. It was a lemon. Would I go back to this liar and buy another car? Or how about another car and then another car and then another car? This is what's happening with Dana Coverstone. Now, in this situation, it's only money. But with baby blue here, this could cost you your soul. So, in other words, you wouldn't trust your money on a guy that kept selling you lemons but you trust your soul to keep following actual, confirmed, and verifiable false prophets. How does that work? 